everyone and welcome back to my channel so as you can see by the title today i'm going to be filming how to make a strong personal statement there is definitely a lot that i have to cover which is why i'm just going to jump right into the video but before i do i thought i'd mention why i feel i qualify in a sense to make a video like this. For those of you who don't know, initially I was a psychology major and um, I decided to pursue grad school right after. I actually had to create um, essays for each school and I applied to five schools um, and out of those five, four accepted me and a part of the reason why I feel like I was accepted was because of my personal statements. I felt confident enough to make this topic and I know given that right now it's application season for a lot of students and I figured I would just make this video. I chose to just do a video on how to, like the process looks like on how to craft a strong personal statement and not really like topics on how to tailor your essay if that makes sense so if this video is not what you're looking for then by all means it's totally okay if you don't want to watch but if you want to get a sense of everything that i did to help make my uh, personal statement strong then feel free to keep watching all right so this video is going to be long so i would suggest you pause it whenever you feel like you want to take notes or anything like that so i think in my opinion the first step that you should do when writing a personal statement is to break down the prompt thoroughly each prompt is going to have about three to four questions depending on the school of course asking you why you're pursuing speech or what exactly influenced you to pursue speech and i think it's important that you break down the prompt because you may interpret the prompt one way when really the question may be asking something else so here i think this is where you can copy and paste them or literally type the prompts on a word document or google doc whatever you use and literally break down question by question that way if you have any questions on the question itself you can go ahead and ask people around you to see if they understand the question the same way you do or if you're having a difficult time understanding the question then they can like easily see what exactly the prompt is asking and i think it's important that you thoroughly break down the prompt because you want to make sure that you answer the question correctly and not incorrectly and have that be an issue and then possibly get your application dismissed because you don't answer the prompt correctly so i think it's important that you just break it down thoroughly so that you get a better idea of what the prompt is asking you all right so the next step is to brainstorm at least one to three pivotal events in your life that influenced you to pursue speech so i think it's very important that in all your undergrad years or even prior to undergrad high school elementary school wherever you really got influenced to pursue speech to write that event down i cannot emphasize enough how important it is to really explain that event in your story because here i think in my opinion is where you want to get as personal as possible you want the admissions committee to really know who you are and so i think you should spend a decent amount of time really getting to explore these events that cultivated your um, desire to want to pursue speech. So when I was applying to grad school, I decided to pick a story that demonstrated how mental health impacted my life since that's the field that I initially was going to pursue. And so what I did was I decided to talk about how I felt as an early teen finding out that my brother was diagnosed with um, autism. I decided to talk about how that made me feel, how that made my family feel, and I decided to really explain that by basically blowing up that specific event onto my essay. So that event really influenced me in terms of how I was going to become a better sister or how to help my family and all these things. So I think that event in itself was very impactful for, for me, which is why I chose to write about that. So that's why I'm saying it's important to spend a decent amount of time on this section so that you can get a better idea on the event that really like influenced you to pursue speech. So once you've narrowed down the two to three events that you chose, this is where you want to actually explain what happened in that event, which is where the writing portion comes in. 
And then um, here, you also wanna make sure that you're answering the rest of the prompts. So I think this is where you can get fun and creative and just get fun with your writing. So in my opinion, the best way to really get creative with your writing is to use imagery. So here you wanna spend some time embracing your story by writing and when you're writing, you wanna make sure that you're explaining your story in a way that you can get in touch with the reader. And by doing so, you want the reader to make sure that they get a sense of what exactly you are feeling in that moment. I remember describing to my reader or the audience about how I felt in that very moment, how um, I felt scared, I felt confused, I felt like I needed to support my parents, but then I felt like I needed to support my siblings, my brother who um, was autistic, um, and so it was just a really good opportunity for me to just embrace my feelings onto paper. So this is why I'm saying you can get creative by using imagery and like fully detailing exactly what happened in that very moment. So the key thing here is to not really worry about the length of the paper, but more so to just get in touch with the experience. For me, a secret or a tip that really helps get my thoughts onto paper and to allow the reader to get a sense of what I'm trying to tell them is to listen to really sad music. This might sound funny, but it tends to work well for me. Whenever there's a part of in a song that's really sad and I get in touch with my emotions, my writing tends to thrive. And what I do is I just end up replaying that song over and over again because I found that if it helps me like get my thoughts onto paper by making me more like emotional, then that means what I'm gonna write is gonna be more emotional. So I highly recommend to listen to sad music or whatever you feel can allow for you to get in touch with your emotions. So the next big thing, in my opinion, which I call it the laborious part, is the editing. So I think this is where you should spend 90% of your time um, making sure that your words are what you really want them to be. So it's one thing to say it and write it on paper, but it's another thing to really um, capture what exactly you're trying to say, which is why you should spend a decent, not just a decent, but like a huge amount of time on the editing portion. The reason why is because you're going to make several mistakes and you're gonna have several drafts. Uh, let's say one day you write something and then another day you don't really like what you wrote and then you end up changing it. That's just additional time added to the editing process, which is why it's important that you spend 90% of your time focusing on trying to make sure that what you're trying to say is relevant to your story. So here, I highly recommend to not do the following. Number one, trying to make it perfect. That's something that I struggle with all the time, which is, which is wanting to make my essay be like spot on. But I think that you spend more time trying to make it perfect than actually trying to convey the story. The second thing is to not worry about the word limit because you're gonna do that later in the editing process. But for now, to just focus on just trying to write. So the next step, in my opinion, is a difficult one because this is where you're going to put the pieces together. In my opinion, I think it's very important that you start with your hook, which in this case is your personal story. As I was saying, admissions committee needs to really get a sense of who you are. And if you don't explain your story right on the bat and you wait to say that towards the end, they're not gonna really get a sense of who you are at the beginning. So in my opinion, your personal story should come first. Because like I said, you wanna give the audience a sense of who you are, a sense of your story, a sense of why you're pursuing speech, and then explain everything else towards the end. Anyways, the next step is, drum roll, more editing, but less to some extent. Because you're starting to put the pieces together, this is where you're really going to edit the draft of where you put the puzzle pieces together. The reason why I think it's less is because you're getting rid of the fluff, such as like extra words or extra sentences that you may not need in your essay. Since you're getting rid of things, you also want to keep in mind the length and the limit of what the prompt is asking you. Some prompts ask you to write your essay within 500 words, which in my opinion is the worst. 500 words is not enough at all. But other prompts may ask you to write it in 700 words or a thousand words. So here is where you want to spend 
a little bit of your time, but then not too much because you already did a lot of the really difficult stuff at the beginning. Another th reason why it's a last edit is because you already theoretically put the whole essay together, which means that people are also going to take a look at it if you want. Here, in my opinion, this is where you should get at least two to three editors, people who you trust, of course, who can take a look at your paper and who can really give you an idea of something to add, something to get rid of, or if you were repetitive, because it's important to get eyes uh, from someone else and not just your eyes, just because you've been looking at this paper probably for a good month by now. Yeah, making sure that you spend some time taking a look at the feedback that your editors provide to you which takes some time but not as much because you're just adding in their perspectives or if they tell you something you may not like it you don't even have to add it in at all but it's still a part of the editing process another tip here in my opinion is to print out the um, essay and have it on paper at least when i was applying to grad school i had to physically send in an application which meant that i had to print out the essays print out the application my my uh, resumes and all those things and i had to literally mail it in which means that they were going to look at my application that way this is how i knew that it was better that i printed out and highlight or anything else that i may think of in the editing process in this portion um, and just edit it that way because it's one thing to see it on paper and it's another thing to see it on a screen so yeah those are my tips for this specific section and finally you have your last step which is just to spend some time taking a look at it and seeing if it's really the draft that you want to submit i spent a good week or so deliberating between sending it or not sending it so this is where you want to really spend some time on your own just reading it quietly to yourself and seeing if this is exactly what you want to send off something that i forgot to mention um in the editing portion is once you're done fully looking at it you want to give the last part of your essay like a good like mm, type of vibe if that makes sense and by doing so you need to really spend some time thinking of words where you want to bring your whole essay together for me i remember just talking about like not really summarizing but in a way talking about my dream my ultimate dream is to pursue this my um thoughts on why i am doing what i'm doing and how their program is going to allow for me to pursue my dream which in this case is to pursue speech so um the ending portion is where you really also want to spend some time because this is where you're wrapping it in a bow and handing it off to the admissions committee which will ultimately decide if they should admit you into their program or not and i know that sounds easier said than done but it definitely takes a lot of work and once you read once you get to that last step where you're reading your paper you're gonna have a feeling in your heart that this is the paper that you've worked so hard for that is ready to get submitted but yeah that basically wraps up today's video i know i talked really really fast i even have a headache because of how fast i was talking but ultimately these are the steps that i used when i was writing my paper you can obviously tweak them depending on your situation of course but these are tips that I know that I used, helped me a lot when I was writing my uh, essays. And I'm sure they can definitely help you as well. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But other than that, that basically concludes today's video. And I will see you all next time. Take care and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!